Hello, and welcome to my presentation on what it's like to work in a medical physics department in the University Hospital of Wales. My name is Amy Roberts, and I'm a clinical scientist working within um, the nuclear medicine department and Dr. Alpstrand within the medical physics. Um, how I got to my job today is I studied in Cardiff University um, physics for medical physics, the undergraduate course. I then got a job um, within Swansea um, Hospital and Cardiff Hospital, and they trained me on, on job, um, completing a part-time master's, which I eventually then um, got my clinical scientist registration. Um, the purpose of this talk is just to give you a broad understanding of some sections that you may find in a medical physics department, the variety of responsibilities and job roles that you can perform within a medical physics department, um, and what, what um, key areas that you will be what responsible for. So um, the presentation was made up from one day um, working in the medical physics department, the 3rd of July, and all the videos and all the images were taken from that day and that day only. So I just wanted to give you how uh, an indication of how varied it was across all the departments, okay? So um, just a brief over overview then, medical physics is the application of physics to medicine and healthcare, and all clinical scientists have um, have the same goal. You want to apply science to improve patient pathways. Um, medical physics um, normally consists of several different subsections, so sub several different sections within the medical physics. Um, I'm going to cover some within, within medical physics, but each medical physics department will have a slightly different structure. But it's normally split into non-ionizing or anionizing sections. So ionizing is normally the use of radiation, and non-ionizing is, is not. Um, within our medical physics staff um, department, we have three staff groups. We have the clinical scientists, clinical technologists, and the admin support staff. The clinical scientists will be the focus of this talk. The clinical technologists, um, if, you, if anybody wants to become a clinical technologist, it's an undergraduate degree. Um, after the three years, you will be a registered clinical technologist. Um, it's, a pra it's more practical, so you'll learn on the job. Um, and if anybody wants any more information on how to become a clinical technologist or um, some experience or how you would how you get about experience, just email me. My email address is at the end of the talk. So the first section I'm going to cover is Doppler ultrasound. I'm lucky enough to work in that department on Mondays and Thursdays, so two days a week. So Dr. Ultrasound uses sound waves um, with frequency above the audible human range um, to create images and then to analyze blood flow. We scan about approximately 30 patients a day um, with two clinical scientists scanning per day. Um, we can scan anything from an X scan um, right away down to a leg scan, okay? So we, all, we analyze the anatomy, so we look at structures, we also look at blood flow, we also, as you've seen from that video, look at waveforms, so how the blood is behaving within the vessel. So this is a, a calf vein scan, so we're looking to see if um, the patient will have a blood clot. So these are some typical scans that you would see within a, an abdominal department. Then moving on then, these are some, some of the um, other um, scans you'll see. These are more gray. This is an uh, artery, uh, artery, and as you can see, there's a leak out of the artery, which is called in an aneurysm, it's called a pseudoaneurysm, the pocket of blood around the, the artery. And then this is a really nice image of showing like a buildup of, around on the vessels. So it's causing the vessel to be narrowed as, as the blood going through. So these are some examples of the Doppler ultrasound, um, which, and then this, another branch of Doppler is the quality assurance. So all our images are dependent on the image being accurate and stable over time. So we have one of our clinical scientists who performs all the quality assurance checks on the machines. He uses a phantom and he takes images to make sure they're accurate and precise and stable over time. And he does not only perform um, quality assurance on our machines, he, pro he, he performs quality assurance on all the machines in the region. So 
within South Wales. So there's a lot of machines. So um, moving on then to um, uh, moving on from Dr. Alsan, we then have a subsection of lasers and UV. So although we don't um, have the equipment within the medical physics department, we are responsible for, to provide scientific support. So how, we how people operate them safely um, to ensure patient safety and operator safety more importantly. So what we do is we do testing on the PPE, we do test, we write procedures on how they should use them and we also test the output, so making sure that they are giving out what we think they are giving out. So UV can be used in various skin conditions, but and lasers can be used in an array of different medical um, applications. So the next then is nuclear medicine. This is what I specialize in mostly, um, is the use of radioactive substances um, to image the body and it looks at how the body processes the radioactivity. So not only just takes an image, but it looks at like how the body breaks down this radioactivity, okay? Nuclear medicine can be split into three different areas. Radiopharmacy, so making, making the product. Imaging, so detecting the gamma rays from the radioactive decay. And then analyzing the images. And clinical scientists are involved in every single part of this. You would normally get a clinical scientist in each subsection of nuclear medicine. So if we look at radiopharmacy first, radiopharmacy takes a drug, so a specific, a special, a specific drug, which is um, attracted to an organ or tissue, and it combines it with the radiation. And then from that, from that combination, you extract the patient dose. All this is done in a clean room, um, so that there's no particles or anything within the in in the in the syringe and then um it's measured on a dose calibrator specifically for that patient it's packaged up and then it's sent to the the hospital we supply eight different hospitals with producing 80 different patient doses a day and and that was me in that image so i was checking them doses that day um so giving them off to um the different hospitals so once um, it's gone off, um, sent to the different hospitals, then it's imaging. So the radioactive substance is then injected into the body and it goes around the body and the radioactive substance decays, giving off gamma rays. Now we need a, um, a piece of equipment that detects the gamma rays and that's the gamma camera. So if you look at the video here, this is the gamma camera. It spins around the patient, detecting the gamma rays. So the patient is the blob on the bed. That's the cold of phantom. So this is um, my testing from the 3rd of July. Um, a phantom is an object that mimics a patient. Um, then it detects the gamma rays using electronics and stuff, then an image is formed. Now, back to what we were doing in Doppler. In, we have to make sure these cam uh, cameras um, operate safely, especially because they get very close to the patient. Also, they need to be accurate and stable over time. And this is my job. I do a lot of QA on the GAM cameras, which leads me very nicely onto my PhD. So a medical physics um, has a very large, um, a big key area is research. So I'm lucky enough to be doing a PhD in um, nuclear medicine. So I'm doing optimization of these gamma cameras. So I'm looking at what gamma cameras are best for detection of bone cancers and to see if I can improve image quality and detection of bone cancers earlier. And as you can see from the images, even in 20 years, um, gamma cameras have moved on a lot. So, and that would be a clinical scientist um, behind the innovation of these gamma cameras. So, um, whatever type of research you're into, medical physics is probably um, there for you. So then we move on to the analysis. So analysis is a scientist's dream. We do graphs, we do calculations, we do percentages, and basically we tell you your heart or your kidneys or your um, your blood flow is is um, working at this percent. And once we got that value, like 
this is an example of a heart. Um, we then write in a report which goes to the doctor, which aids the diagnosis of the scan. So they write the report based on our values. Once, once this is done, then that's the nuclear medicine um, scan finished and it's all wrapped in, up in a nice bow. So the last area then is like a subsection of nuclear medicine. It's, it's called a DEXA scan. And it looks at um, bone density. This is really important when you're looking at fractures, when people are getting fractures within their bones. It uses two beams of x-rays and it passes through the patient and detected on the other side. Because there's two different um, NGs of x-rays, they'll interact with the patient differently. So the images are then um, analyzed by a clinical scientist and a report is written um, based on the bone densities and they'll give the results to the consultant, which will influence the patient pathway. Now, this is very patient oriented. They scan about 20 to 30 patients a day, and it, it is very patient focused. So depending on what the patient can do, the scan is all good to them. So that is another side which is very patient focused. So in conclusion then, Medical physics every day is completely different. When you put, when you throw patients into the mix, you have to change your protocols depending on the patient in front of you. There's several different areas that you can work in depending on what your strengths are. If you want to be patient focused, if you want to be maths focused, if you want to be protocol driven focused, so if you want to write protocols, but legislation that is completely up to you. Also, if you want to be quite academic, you can keep on going. So you can do your BSc, you can do your MSc, you can do your PhD. You can even then advise on a, more of a government level. There's, there's, um, there's progression in research in, in many different areas. So medical physics is a large variety for clinical scientists, depending on your strengths, your weaknesses, and you can tailor your job and you can get into a job that is completely um, focus on your strengths. So thank you for listening. Um, I do have a question and answer session later on um, in the week. So if you have any questions, you can ask me then. But if you, if you have any burning questions, now you can email me on the email address there. Um, and any questions in the future, I'll be more than happy to help you um, along with your career. So thank you for listening. Um, my name's Amy and there's my email address. Thank you.